Your metabolism. Scapegoat. Yeah, it's definitely your metabolism because you can't see it or do anything about it. But in this video, you're gonna learn about what you can do to speed up that fucking metabolism. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> we are Dan and Mike. We are biceps and banter. We're neither funny nor have any but arms, but no. it was a cool name, so we thought we'd go we with it. We do have arms. We do have them. They literally don't have arms. Literally, yeah. Literally don't have any biceps. Well, literally we do, so actually yeah. we do. Metabolisms are made to scapegoat for so many things. Can't lose weight, it's your metabolism. Slow metabolism, woo! Can't put on weight, it's your fast metabolism. Yeah. I've got a really fast metabolism. I've got a really slow metabolism. No, you probably just Not got a normal, really. You just got a normal metabolism. Most people's metabolisms don't vary that much. No. One of the biggest variables when it comes to metabolisms is your is your needs and is the amount you move, the amount people expend just doing everyday tasks. So just walking around, whether I, for example, walk or take a car will affect my overall metabolism. But that's what people say when they say metabolism. They think they, they just think of the amount of calories that's yeah. burned just doing nothing. Yeah, they think metabolism is like like something inherent within them that, mm. that burns the, a set amount of calories and you either have a slow one or a fast one whereas no. metabolism is four things yeah so what people get confused with is BMR like BMR yeah. is is the amount of calories you will expend if you were just laid on your fucking back like a vegetable called basal metabolic rate BMR. next is your NEAT so mm. like Dan says that stands for non exercise activity thermogenesis which is a posh, posh word yeah for just moving it's a posh word for moving but but the other thing as well with with that is you then got eat which is exercise activity thermogenesis so that is all the uh, calories you burn Conscious. when you do exercise yeah. and that's the ones you try and do from doing more cardio playing sport going to the weights room <laughs> hey lads <laughs> hey lads um, and then the last one is the thermic effect of feeding which is the amount of calories it takes to burn off the food that you're digesting, all that sort of stuff. Um, and that's pretty negligible, that doesn't really vary. Neat is the most important one, in my opinion, for most people, because the amount of calories you actually burn from exercise is minimal. Over the course of the day, it's pretty minimal. Most, let's say, Mike's probably overall metabolism, you might burn, say, three, three and a half thousand a day, potentially. Something like that. And if you consider that uh, one hour in the gym is gonna burn 350, yeah. if you're lucky, 350 calories, it's not a lot, 10%. So the other makeup of that metabolism, a huge part of it, and the thing that you can control, because you can't really control your BMR, is that NEAT. Because you're awake for large portions of the day, you're moving, I'm moving my arms now, Mike's nodding his head, itching his bollocks, you know, all that sort of stuff. Like these things do contribute to your calorie output. And people seem to forget that. They focus on either their BMR or their, oh, I've got a slow metabolism. Yeah. You don't, you just sit on your ass all day. Yeah. Or they focus on their exercise and they focus on doing a bit more of their. Yeah. And doing the quick maths and all that sort of stuff, it's not gonna leave you, um, it's not gonna leave you burning that many calories or in a better place than you were previously. So when people say that their metabolism has slowed down, like when they're dieting or um, like, they can't lose any more weight, it's more than likely the fact that they've just stopped moving. Yep. So like, and this happens subconsciously, you will stop talking with your fucking hands like this. You start doing that. Yeah, you'll start walking a little bit slower and expending less calories when you're walking. You'll stop rolling over in bed. You'll stop scratching as much. You'll stop fidgeting. And all of these things you'll do without even fucking noticing. Mm -hmm. Like, because it's your body telling, not telling you, because it's not conscious, but it's slowing you down to preserve calories and keep you keep you alive because it knows that you're in an energy deficit which yeah. which if you did it forever you would die mm -hmm. so it, it starts to slow the non-essential processes down and it just makes you move a little bit less so if you're conscious about getting your knee a good way of ramping up your metabolism is to keep that knee increased yeah. something very very simple to do track your steps yeah. if you track a certain amount of steps and you keep keep it above a basal level per week you know that you are not subconsciously starting to move a little bit less and you're always going to have that basic amount in there yeah if you track your steps and say you do 4,000 don't go well I need to do 10,000 because that's the the golden number maybe just start with something like 7,000 and you've increased it slightly and then keep it there and then if you've got a little bit more scope to do a bit more then go up to 10,000 mm. like you don't need to think I've got to hit 10 because on those days where actually you can't hit 10 because you normally move four you might think oh fuck that yeah. like make it realistic do you know what we're going to do now just go for a little walk yeah. during your day if you can take your lunch break go for a walk people say they can't do it you can, they can do really it want to do it um, so we're going to go for a little walk now and then we'll be back for point number two Number two, yeah, yeah, 
hair is a mess. I know, yeah, I've not done it today. So it's mine, to be fair. Yeah, I know. Where's yours? Still at home? Yeah, left yeah. at home, didn't I? Point number two is that you're maybe you're not adherent, as adherent to your diet as you were at the start of it. So a lot of people, when they start to diet and they stop losing weight, they'll go, oh, my metabolism's slowed, when actually you're just eating a bit more, aren't you? You're yeah, fatty. you're just sneaking a bit more on the plate or you're grabbing the odd, you know, the little bit of your mate's food to try a bit and then you, or something else Somebody comes at up. work's brought some biscuits in. Yeah. Oh, I have one. I'm doing well yeah, on my diet. I'll have count. one. And so you have one every day. Yeah, it's only 100 calories. It doesn't count. Well, actually, it does count. Yeah. So. That's what happens. So basically what happens is you, as you diet, you get a little bit, you get a little bit what we call sometimes diet fatigue, which can come into it, which means you maybe forget to track things. Yeah. Um, you forget that you've had little bits and bobs here and there. So maybe let's say at the start of your diet, you wouldn't track green veg and ketchup, let's say for example, right? And now you're into week 12 of your diet and you're eating wheelbarrows of, of broccoli and fucking you're getting through a whole thing of ketchup in a day. Well, guess what? That's going to take you out of your calorie deficit. It's not because your metabolism has slowed down or you've damaged it. It's because you're now, you're tracking and your accuracy of you're tracking is not more, as yeah. good as it used to be. And then that's that's just something that happens naturally. It all happens to all of us, whether yeah. it's consciously or subconsciously, it happens. So you need to be aware of that. And people tend to under-report at the best of times. Mm -hmm. Like, so even in research, people are shown to under-report, like, full stop. Yeah. So when you've been dieting eight, nine, ten weeks, do you not think that you're going to be a little bit more lax than week one? Yeah. Fucking right you are. Yeah. Like, it happens to all of us. You go, ah, oh, that... Oh, that doesn't matter. Oh, I won't weigh that. I'll eyeball that. Oh, I'll track that as something else, which is a little bit lower. And you just yeah. start to eat a little bit more because you are fucked. You're tired. You're hungry. And you yeah. want to eat a bit more food. And you tell yourself that, nah, that's fine. I can have that. So, yeah, it's not your metabolism that's slow. It's just that you're eating a little bit more. And then yeah. with the other things that we've suggested so far, which is increase, decrease in eat, again, it can just it can just cause you to plateau on the scale. The thing is, well, is we're talking here, maybe say 100, 150 calories a day that you're off, right? But let's say you're 150 calories down on your knee, you're 150 calories off in your tracking, and then you're 150 calories off on the next thing we're going to talk about. That's, your, that's a 500 calorie day deficit, gone, yeah. completely. So, <clears throat> people always say, oh, the little things don't matter. It's, oh, it's only 50 calories, it's only 60 calories, but over the course of the days and weeks, all these little things add up and they mean that you're not losing weight at the rate you might have been at the start. And it's all because of these things, not because your metabolism has slowed down. The little things do matter. I'm glad the little things matter. Yeah. Fucking good job they do. Yeah, come good. In, good yeah. things come in small packages. It's like a sack of marbles down there. <laughs> three of them. Sack of, I wish it was a sack of marbles, mate. Oh, three of them. Know. Two balls <laughs> and one little knob there. <laughs> like a little marble. God, my missus would love it if it was a marble. If it was a marble? Yeah, at least it'd be hard. <laughs> It's a great detective. Point three. Fine actor. Reduced training intensity. Uh, yeah. You'll go some fucking way to reduce I that. I mean, yeah. I don't know how you can reduce zero. Yeah. But, you know. <clears throat> but it does stand to reason that, let's say you start off your diet doing, I don't know, half an hour of cardio a day, let's just say. <clears throat> just, catch me doing that. Yeah. It's, it's, not, it's not feasible. Like, you're probably going to do it maybe three times a week, whatever. But, like, let's just say you're doing half an hour. And at the start of your diet, you weigh 90 kilos. Now, let's say you've lost 10, 15 kilos. The amount of calories you're going to burn in that half an hour because you're moving less mass is going to be greatly reduced. Mm -hmm. One. Two, the chances are is you're pretty fucked after losing 10 or 15 kilos. You've yeah. probably been in a deficit for quite some time. So you might not be putting as much effort into that half an hour. So whereas before... You were going at a pretty moderate pace. Now you might be fucking moving slower than Stevie Wonder reading the dictionary. Painfully slow. Probably in the wrong direction as well. I'd, yeah, I'd, I'd backwards. Guess. Chinese? Is he Chinese? <laughs> the other thing as well when it comes to training intensity is that often as well, as you go through a diet, the first four, six weeks of your diet, you're like, oh, I'm still lifting loads of weight, I'm still hitting PBs, yeah, because yeah. your motivation's high, things are going to be going well. After 12, 15, 16 weeks, training intensity is going to suffer. Now, some people will say it doesn't have to, but inevitably it will. At some point, you can't do the same amount of volume that you used to be able to yeah. do. Um, your calories are going to be a little bit lower, so you're not going to have the same level of intensity that was there before. You might take longer rest periods in between those sessions, uh, in between those sets and, and reps and stuff like that. That is going to affect the amount of calories that you burn in that session. Again, not massively. It might be 50 calories over an hour that is let you know you burn less over yeah. the hour. But again, you train five times a week. And like I said, combine all the other things that adds up. Like I say, you know, the cardio. And the cardio. Again. Like you, in, in half an hour at the beginning of a diet, you might have been doing 400 calories. At the end, it might be 200. Let's say you're doing that every day, seven days, yeah. let's say. So as opposed to doing 2,800, you're now only doing 1,400. So that's a 1,400 reduction, like out of your deficit. Yeah. And again, like with Dan says, with the other things that come in from before, 
you could take yourself out. So the yeah. way that we do cardio is we track the calories. Now, yes, the machine or the Fitbit or whatever you're using might not be entirely accurate, but it's always going to be consistently inaccurate. So yeah. if you say, for example, I've done 200 one day and 400 the next, yes, the first day you might have only done one, eight, three, or two, 12, or whatever. Like, but we know, we know. We know. That you will have done double regardless so yeah. double the the 183 or whatever and that's the main thing that we're looking for is that the yeah. amount is is relative right yeah and isn't like i said there's just no way that your metabolism is, is slowing down to that degree it's all these other things like you know doing the quick maths and all that you can quickly see how a three and a half thousand calorie deficit a week which is what a lot of people aim for to give you that that half a kilo a week loss but you can take yourself out of that. You can be at maintenance calories just from doing all that sort of stuff. And that's all stuff that's induced by dieting and induced by going for a long period of time with diets. And things like diet breaks occasionally can help you, you get rid of that fatigue element to it. But within a couple of weeks, it's going to come back. Like it's not a, a save all thing. It's just part and parcel of dieting and losing weight. So don't get despondent about it. Don't get down about it. Just accept that, yes, your calories are going to reduce. You're going to have to eat less food. You're going to feel like you don't want to move. You're going to feel fatigued. You're going to feel like you can't be bothered to do this sort of stuff. It's nothing to do with your metabolism crashing or yeah. irreversibly, or, you know, you can't fix it. Like, it's all stuff that when you start eating more food again, it reverses, you get back to normal, you feel good, your body fat percentage goes up a little bit, and you're happy, and everything works as it should do. So if you're plateauing, look at the things that we've just said, even though they're not sexy. The chances are is that it is that you've stopped moving and you're not doing as many steps. Yep. It is that your training is not as good. And it is that you're just being a little less accurate yeah. with your tracking and you're having picky yeah. bits here and there. So it is yeah. those things. It's not. It isn't the fact yeah. that you need a cheat meal to boost your metabolism. Or it you've got adrenal fatigue. That you've got adrenal fatigue. Or that you should be drinking six green teas or taking fat burners or eating breakfast to spike your metabolism or eating yeah. little and often. None of those None things... Of those where people will go, oh, this is better for your metabolism, that's better for your metabolism. None of those things fucking matter. No. What actually matters in terms of metabolism is like we said before, is your BMR can't really do much to affect it. No. What you can affect is your NEAT, your EAT, and you can't affect your thermic effect of food. So no. take care of the things that you can affect. So your NEAT, your EAT, and your intake. I promise you, any, any change, anything that helped, regardless of what you've done, we can refer back to those points, and it'll be because one of those things has changed within your diet, within your lifestyle. If you like this video, then like it. Fucking hit the thumbs hit up. Hit that thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe as well. If you've got anything that you want us to talk about, stick them below, comment below. Thanks guys. See you later.